Hey everybody. So last year I purchased two of these security cameras off of Amazon. They connect with Wi-Fi and they charge via solar panel. And for the most part I say they're pretty decent, but there's one thing that I'm pretty frustrated with about these things is um, the only way to access them is through an Android app on your phone. Me, I like to have access to a computer. My computer has dual 24 inch screens and honestly, I think that's a whole lot better approach than having to find my phone and, uh, you know, view through this little screen. So, in this one, I'm going to show you how you can access one of these devices through your computer. And it's actually really easy to do. Let's go inside and have a look. Okay, everybody. So, here we are looking at my, uh, well, my two computer screens. And I'm going to show you how I access my security cameras, which only have an Android app, using the computer. And I use a piece of software called BlueStacks. And this is actually not my first time featuring BlueStacks on this channel. I did a video several years ago talking about how do you, you can use uh, BlueStacks to upload photos to Instagram using your PC. So I can definitely say that BlueStacks has definitely improved a bit over the years because the last time I tried it out years ago um, when I did this previous video I noticed that on occasion it would actually crash my whole system and that's not good um, luckily now it seems that it's improved and I've not had any issues with BlueStacks crashing the system so getting BlueStacks is really easy it's actually free you can just look up BlueStacks and you can download it through here now the thing about BlueStacks, they seem to be very uh, tailored around like games and stuff. As a matter of fact, when we launch this software, you can see it's very heavily tailored around games. I think a common use for this product is to be able to play Android games on your computer, like for example, games you normally have on a smartphone. So you would download BlueStacks, which I've already done, and the installation process is very straightforward. Nothing really much to show there. The only issue you might run into is, depending on the age of your computer, you may not be able to run the 64-bit version. You may have to run an older version, and you could have some issues there. But most computers nowadays, I think, would be able to run BlueStacks just fine. In some cases, you might have to um, go into your computer's BIOS or firmware set utility to enable virtualization if it's not already enabled and of course that depends on your motherboard or computer manufacturer so that being said let's go ahead and launch BlueStacks okay so here's BlueStacks loading up it does take a moment as I was saying very heavily tailored around games and I think it's pretty nice <laughs> we got all these notifications pop up in here because I've already uh, I've already set this up for myself. So when you launch BlueStacks, you're going to be greeted with this uh, sort of app store. And if you already have your app installed, you can just click home to go to your home screen. So if you're running this for the first time, you'll need to install the app for your security camera. And mine happens to be this weird name called UIs, or however you pronounce it. And when you look it up here, it's not going to show any results, but you had this button at the bottom of the screen to uh, search in Google Play. So here you'll sign into Google Play, and then you can search for the app. And here it is, and you can see I've already installed it, so I could just click up in here. Um, but actually, I'm going to go to the home screen. And let's go ahead and close out these apps. You can see this is basically an Android emulator. That's what this is. Um, so we're going to launch our security camera app. It's going to sign in real quick. Okay, so we're in. And I should note the first time that you launch this app or whichever app you have, chances are it will actually launch in portrait mode and I'm just going to demonstrate portrait mode now when you launch it in portrait mode it looks like a giant phone screen but it's not really using up a lot of your computer screen 
Now I should note you do have these advertisements toward the left. Um, if that bothers you, you can actually full screen or you can turn those off. They do allow you to turn it off without having to pay for the product, but it's ad supported software, so may as well let the ads run. But um, <clears throat> here we are in my uh, security camera app and you can see my two cameras. And what's nice is I don't have to go hunting for this. And of course my computer screen is much, much bigger than my phone screen. So anyways, we'll do a quick little demonstration here. Now, um, as you had seen, I actually have, or I had it set in landscape mode. So we're going to set that back to landscape mode. We got these little buttons over here. So going to save and restart. And here, the thing is, um, there is the option to rotate, as you can see here. And as you can see, the app does not respond to the rotation. It just stays sideways, and it does it when it's in portrait mode too. So I'm not really sure what the deal is there. This particular app is not the best. It does have some bugs here and there. But um, anyways, just to do a quick little demonstration, we're going to go into live here on... Well, did this, did this crash? Like I say, it's a little buggy at times. The first time I really had any issues with it. Anyways, here we are. We're connecting live to my side camera. This might take a moment. There we are, and you can see that this is actually really clear. Um, now, if we go full screen, we'll just press F11. So you can see now the uh, my camera is actually full screen, and this looks really nice and big on my 24-inch screen. A whole lot better than this, even when it's sideways. So it's a definite win there. Um, see, my neighbor must have got his mail just now. <laughs> But um, to get out of that, was going to go back. And like I say, the experience overall might be a little iffy because, like I say, this app is a little weird. But for the most part, it works fine for me. And, of course, the experience you have will depend on the security camera app that you have. But at least it this solves a big sort of dilemma I had. And that was not being able to access my cameras using my computer screen. And like I say, this is this is a whole lot nicer. Um, now, of course, I should note I have not done a video review of my cameras. I may do so in the future. I basically wanted to spend roughly maybe a year with them before I post a video review on them. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I, I can sort of recommend them, but there's definitely better stuff out there if you want to spend extra money and I says that's, that's something I'll talk about in a future video and I should note you do have the ability to listen in so you might be able to hear the birds and of course the sound on these cameras isn't exactly the best now you do have the option to record um, a video for example, do a quick, quick little recording, and then we'll stop it. Now it says it saved it to the phone album. I'm not sure where that is this yet. I'm still trying to get myself more familiar with BlueStacks, but and you can take a snapshot if you wish. Now I should note on a phone, I can drag in and actually zoom in on stuff. Now I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet on BlueStacks, but don't really need to because I mean everything's nice and big. So there you go. Like I say, I'm trying to I'm trying to scroll down and it's not letting me scroll down. It's something that happens with this thing when I have a live video playing and it has to do with this app. But if I go up to the top and I scroll up to refresh that fixes that. So for example, go into library and let's see if I can find the video from yesterday. Now, I should note I have these cameras, they have uh, micro SD slots in them, and I have 128 gig SD cards in them, or micro SD cards. So you can see me out there on the porch a few times. I'm trying to remember why I shot the video. Okay, that was actually today. No wonder. Of course, I was in and out a lot, and there was actually two thunderstorms yesterday. So, here I am shooting the intro to this video. 
if we want to watch that. I'm trying to scroll down, but anyway. Like I say, the experience is a little iffy, but what's nice is I can go in and manage my cameras, and I can go back and look at videos and stuff like that. So, I definitely do think this is a viable option if you have a security camera or camera set from Amazon or wherever that lacks the ability to connect them via a PC where the, the developer over in China only invests enough money to make an Android app. This is an option. So, Okay, everybody, so I thought it wouldn't be, wouldn't be fair to end this video without showing y'all some fixes for the mentioned issues earlier in this video. So, the first thing is I figured out how to export videos that I produce in the UI's app. More or less, say, quote unquote, save to the phone. So, what you do is from the home screen in the uh, Blue Stacks app player, you go to System Apps, and there is a Media Manager. So if you go in here, you can see the video files. So actually, I recorded one in the video clip earlier, but I also recorded a separate one at a later time. And also, I had downloaded a video at a different time. So all you have to do is you can click to play. Now let's get out of that. So, you click and hold, and that actually highlights the video. And then you can just click the other two, or however many. And up here at the top, you have the option to export to Windows. So then you can save them wherever. I'm going to save them to a specific spot here in just a sec. And as you can see here, there are our files. So that's how you can export the files at least from any that you download from the app onto the device, a virtual phone or tablet, whatever you want to call it. That's how you can do that. And also, there are ways you can adjust the screen resolution. And so what we'll do here is we'll click the little hamburger button up here, go to settings, and in here we have let's see display. You can choose your screen resolution. It says recommended resolution 1920 by 1080. Mine was actually at 1600 by 900 originally, and I upped it to 1920 by 1080. And you can also adjust the pixel density. So, for example, we set it to 240, and we'll save changes, and it's going to restart. Okay, there we are. So, you can click My Games, and it takes you to basically the home screen and to your, um, yeah. So clicking my games will take you to home or clicking the home button up here takes you to home. You can clearly see this emulator is highly game focused, but it can run Android apps, you know, like this regular Android apps as well, such as Instagram, things like that. So now if we re relaunch the camera app, and I had to actually set it back to um, set it back to landscape because I do kind of like it better that way. Again, it's a little glitchy this way, but the, the uh, video screens are much, much larger. And I should take a moment to show y'all the night mode on these cameras. It's pretty nice. So this is infrared. Once it connects, it takes a moment. So this is infrared. And it can be a little laggy at times. But as you can see, you can see really well, and there's nothing lit up out here. Now, for example... I might be able to toggle the light on with this. Actually, no, not here. Um, there are ways you can turn the light on using this app. But yeah, this is just the infrared. So pretty nice. So that's uh, a couple of fixes to the issues I mentioned earlier. Anyways, hope this is helpful. That wraps it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.